All right, good afternoon, gentlemen. Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. It's pretty early in the morning for me. I haven't been up at um, 11 in quite a while. And um, it's episode number three, Peaky Blinders. I'm excited to get into it. It's been quite a few days since I watched the previous episode. And um, I just went on YouTube to check how the previous episodes were doing, if there was any comments. And a guy named Sam Painter, thank you for your comment. I actually read the entire thing, and um, you were really nice about it, and you informed me on... Um, a good amount of things, Sam Neill's accent, you said that it was pretty authentic. Like I mentioned in the previous episode, I can't really judge whether it's authentic or not. I don't really have any history in that, but um, there's just still something about it that sounds a little off and a little, I don't want to say fake because obviously it's real, but it just doesn't sound good to me and I can't really describe that in any um way that makes sense so we'll see how that progresses uh, you also told me that Killian is or sorry that I was pronouncing Cillian and it's actually Killian so that's great maybe I'll continue saying that so it's a little less embarrassing Helen McRory I believe that's how you say her name um, is from Harry Potter she played Draco's mom Narcissa Malfoy that's a great point I actually did go ahead and search that up so I knew that but thank you for uh, I guess reassuring that and then um, you just told me about all the ages and how um What's her name? Polly or Helen McCrory's character is um, the aunt, not the um, mother. And my friend actually told me that. But um, thanks for the comment. That actually helped me out a bit. I, I liked reading through that. And um, yeah, it just it, it felt pretty good. You know, people actually communicating. So yeah. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump into this episode and see what it's like. This is episode number three out of six for the first season. I'm liking the show so far. It's not, like, exceptional to me, you know? It's not like... Like, I don't really want to click next episode. I don't care that much, but everyone's told me that the first few episodes are pretty slow, and then it progresses, and it becomes, like, one of the best shows ever. So we'll see how that happens or how that develops for me. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. I've talked for uh, a bit too much. Starting us off with some blacksmiths. I love when he just walks around and they show off the city. Like, all the workers and everything, it just feels very natural, I guess. Just kind of puts you in the world. The guns? Oh, there you go, yeah. Hmm, regular people are starting to find out. These guys want to buy them up, huh? This guy's a freak. Anyone that just starts singing randomly is fucking crazy. Nice little performance there. Are they getting married? Yep. Oh, under the same bridge where they started it off, huh? One female operative has proved more useful than any you great lumps of man. Yeah, she could just fit in and no one expects her, right? Police officers, sir. Most of my great lumps of men served in France too, sir. Everyone likes to diss him because he didn't go to France, huh? I want to know why he didn't go, though. Everyone keeps pushing that. And obviously, I mean, if you put yourself into the time, it's like, if a guy didn't go and fight, then it's like, there's that whole, like, coward thing, and... Yeah, everyone, I guess, judges him. This guy definitely only had, like, one drink. Oh, this is not good for her. What is she gonna do? Is she gonna kill him? Oh shit. Yeah, I mean, there's not really any other way out of that, right? If she doesn't kill him, it's not like she can blackmail him. And then she'll be discovered. Hmm. Oh, someone saw, huh? Oh shit. Don't tell me it was her that saw. Are you armed? I don't think it was though, right? Then I'll tell you. Oh she's Aiden and Freddie Thorne were married today. Mm. They defied your orders. I promise they robbed Freddie out of town. Hmm. Promised who? The cop, right? Okay, so She's not having the greatest day. Maybe that's the first time she's killed someone. And the neighbor said that she saw a young woman leaving the streets where the body was found. Hmm. So it was just a random neighbor. I wondered if there was a connection. A connection with what, Sergeant? 
your spy. Your spy was a woman, sir. I wondered if there was now a policy. Two hundred pounds, ready. For what? To leave, right? For us. You think I can't handle Tommy Shob? You can't. I'm having trouble these days, and I'm twice the man you are. <laughs> That's a good line. Would you ladies at least let a man sleep on it? He's definitely not leaving. Man, I love statues. Statues are just so cool. There's not too many of them around me, so I guess maybe that's why I romanticize them, but just... I don't know. Carving shit out of rock is... Like, look how cool that is. I don't know. Just looks so epic and royal and expensive, I guess. Yeah, they definitely have that father-daughter connection going. She probably doesn't love that, but, um... There he is. Women and slow man. Such a funny-looking guy. Billy Kimber. If you are coming to the races, bring that pretty barmaid of yours. Already invited. Hmm. It's the only reason he's bringing her, right? Or at least that's what he's letting on. Oh, no. Yeah, this guy's definitely going to be an annoyance. He's got the Flanders Blues account. The what? People keep asking me questions, though I don't know the answer to. Hmm. Definitely feels left out, yeah. Where's she living then? No. Yeah, Tommy seems to be keeping a lot from him, huh? Children. Oh, listen to me. You've had a hard time these past few years, God knows how. You deserve some rest. Mm. I think you still should have told him, huh? It fell off a wagon into but this is a really good scene. Is she going to buy the pub for him? Well, we know what to do. You spend two thirds of your life in pubs, just pour it instead <laughs> of drinking it. What you can't do, drink it, Dargot. Your pub, you do what you want. Two thirds of your life in a pub. Ah. Bloody gentlemen. And Freddy's pointing a gun at Tommy. Let me tell you. He doesn't want his money, he's not leaving, huh? Sit down. Sit! Yeah, Tommy isn't at all intimidated by him. But he so desperately wants him to be. Talk to me about <laughs> Man, that was that was cool. Loaded Ada into a bastard. Because she's a Shelby. <laughs> you loaded her loaded with your bastard. I've loved her since she was nine and I was twelve. She loves me the same. Yeah, I don't know. The way that they're playing their relationship, it's it's hard to say if it's authentic or not. Like, is he trying to play her or does he actually like her? Another flashback. Yeah, this is literal hell. Imagine fighting in World War One. Yeah, that's crazy, man. That was amazing. Uh, those scenes are the best, and I want to know what that pipe is, if someone could let me know. Like, what exactly is he smoking there? But no, those those flashback scenes... Was the, Oh, he's back. But those flashback scenes are so good, man. I want more of those. Piecing together his past from the war. I guess we're going to hear what he did in London. Maybe he's going to find out that the girl is... Um, uh, working with she the cops, or she's a cop. An IRA man. Use it sometimes myself. Yeah, he can smell what he's smoking, right? 
Yeah, tell me you're trying to mask it with whiskey and smoke, huh? Yeah, that's really impactful. Man, that sucks. Imagine waking up every morning and just... Feeling like shit. Men always tell the troubles to our mate. What is it you and Freddy are fighting over? Is he gonna suspect something? She may be digging a little too deep. I love this music, it's so good. To come back alive, it's just me and a girl. To come back alive, huh? What exactly is going down at this event? Tommy seems to have some kind of a plan. He has a gun with him. Is it just the two? Something big is definitely going on, right? This, quiet, like. this kid's like eight. I guess that's pretty cool though, because well, no one's going to expect to get stabbed by a kid. You can just walk up to. We're not keeping the cash. That's a cool shot. Man, I want to see what Tommy does when he finds out that she's a cop. They're definitely going to fall in love, but we'll see how that develops. Well, he's just dancing with her to get closer to Kimber, huh? Yeah, everything's calculated with, with Thomas Shelby. You always think that it's just a dance and then it's something else. Or he's using it to get to something or... Hmm. I don't think they're gonna get away clean. Oh, they don't even plan on doing it. In return, you give us... Man, this is so cool. I love how we approach this. She wants the girl, yeah? What is he gonna tell her that she has to go out with him? She's definitely not too happy about that. And I can't be intimidated by this guy. He's just. He's so funny. His look, his voice, everything about him. Is she gonna shoot him? Hmm, very smart. Yeah, it's a big ask. Forget this ever happened. Alright, well, I don't know. I wasn't expecting her to shoot him, but I wasn't expecting that to be the way that they got out of things. Why did you change your mind, Thomas? Because he likes her. There we have it. Episode number three. Another great episode. I really like this one. I think this is probably my favorite out of the um, three we've seen so far. We are now at the halfway point of the first season. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to see where the rest of the show goes. Um, you know, it's, it's moving pretty slowly, but I like the atmosphere of it overall, and I think that's almost, in a way, more important. I just like living in this world. So, yeah, I'm excited to continue watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. I enjoyed the episode. I can't wait to see the next ones. Hopefully you join me for the next ones. Have a great day.